Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Scumbags Movie Podcast 165. I just woke up. My name's Seth. <laughs> and I didn't. My name's Nick. You're a go-getter. Up early on the weekends. I can't stay asleep. I was I'm still sick. laying in bed when you said, restarting my stuff. And you're probably like, ah. <laughs> oh, God. What you drinking over there? Dutch Bros? Dutch Bros got me a kicker. Oh, nice. I do miss Dutch. I've got a homemade iced coffee with Ooh. Willy Wonka, Whipple Scrumptious, Fudgy, whatever, caramel. 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 Mm-mm. What do you think? pretty good it's pretty good how does he do it my dear boy do you ask a fish how it swims a bird or how gay it how he fucks <laughs> no sir you don't i do it because they were born to do it <laughs> god it's i like, want to watch that film it's like you were born to be a wankerer <laughs> <laughs> who can suck a fat cock <laughs> <laughs> who can give a blow job <laughs> <laughs> oh shit gross how's it going bud it's going good um glad we're on here doing our third consecutive episode Back yeah to the grind put up a movie room tour as well i did yeah check that out you know it's pretty happy with it, it took 10 minutes to make and you know it's a little overview of my dedicated room yeah, i mean cute. i was watching other people's movie room tours on there i'm like wow my shit sucks in comparison but you know whatever if it's, if you like it that's what matters right you know i don't keep have twenty thousand dollars to dump into it yeah cute blankets though thanks man thanks. <laughs> do you do you did you cuddle up with your uh halloween uh blanket to watch friday the 13th yesterday i didn't not in my room of virginity i didn't <laughs> <laughs> did you watch anything uh no not yesterday no how about you I watched heavyweights. It's a good choice. Good choice. Essential summer film. It, it is. I need to get some of those going. Jaws, heavyweights, vacation. You know. Ooh. Sex summer, drive. Sex drive. The summer routine. I uh, had to get some just for men to dye my beard. And it went a little too dark. I couldn't even tell. Oh, that's good because it looks fucking dark. So I ended up finding my first gray hair the other day, and uh abruptly thought about jumping in front of a train it sucks man <laughs> at least you're getting late in your 20s though not near when you're 16 like i did yeah well once i start balding that's a whole other story that's gonna be worse yeah but maybe you won't your hairline looks pretty intact i got a five head though There's i mean has, of... has it receded or has it always been like that i feel like it's always been like this fuck so I, I'd, I'd kill for that hairline man you still got at a long time. At least it grows. That's yeah. that's a good thing. You've still got a long time. I never want to cut it now. <sighs> going for a long look. I'm going to donate it to Locks for Lux. Are Locks. you? Is, it, is that the plan? Well, I didn't even think about it until the other day. I went to the uh, I went to the car wash, and there's this fucking salesman guy who just works there. You can. He's just like one of those guys that likes to talk, and he's just like. Oh, I used to have your hair when I was about thirty years younger. I'm like, ha 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 ha. <laughs> and he, he pulls out a <laughs> he pulls out a picture of his like long gray hair, and he's like, well, I I I uh I uh, chopped it all off. I, I sent it off to uh sent it off to Locks for Lux, and you know it fucking sucks because nobody wants gray a gray wig. <laughs> they they want color. <laughs> Like, I'm uh, sure there's somebody out there that will want a gray wig. Somebody out there could use it. That's a, that's a nice idea, a nice charitable idea. Yeah, and then he suckered me into a a monthly uh, <laughs> car wash subscription. <laughs> Did you, you pay for it? Yeah. Oh fuck! How much? Uh, it's twenty something a month. Also, take your car at least three times a month. Yeah, I'm already gonna take it again today because I got bird yeah. shit on it. So it's there you like, go. Just take it. Yeah, but he was a. Uh, Fucking he was sleaze a, bag. He was a talker. You could yeah. tell. He said some dumb shit like, you know, me and my brothers, my my dad was the uh, was the uh, fire chief at a fire department. My two brothers wanted to be firemen. I wanted to be successful. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're working at a car wash, yeah. sir. I mean, you know, calm down, Saul. 
<laughs> yeah, he was a he was a character. They always are in those roles. They always are. Yeah. Spe- speaking of characters, did you see the uh, the new trailer for Avatar? I didn't. I mean, looks you know, pretty I, pretty cool. I thought about trying to watch that the other day because I was going through some Jim, some Jimmy Cameron classics. You know, ooh, Body of Lies or what's, what's the, oh, did he direct that? What's the what's the one he did? Um, something like that. Maybe he did. It's with Jamie. What's uh, the body body True he, Lies. True Lies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I haven't seen that. <laughs> Me neither. But yeah, I mean. I haven't watched the original Avatar since it came out. I've never even seen it all the way through. It put me to sleep. That's a movie that I'm just so peculiar. I don't understand how it was able to to do what it did. Yeah, you know when you when you start looking at some of James Cameron Cameron's work, you know he should be mentioned up there. Um, I think it's just because he's such a pompous asshole. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not a huge fan of Avatar, but a lot of people are. I made a ton of money terminator it was a spectacle he's yeah. always known for spectacle yeah I mean, titanic was enormous you know yeah i mean yeah no i agree i mean he's made some of the most influential and popular movies ever oh god i love terminator I'm so good king of the world. oh jack i've only seen the original terminator one time it's good yeah. except for that stop motion scene at the end when you see the skeleton of the terminator it's a little bit rough yeah it's cool in peewee's big adventure but <laughs> <laughs> that's what i was gonna say um like i was re-watching the first terminator it's almost like a horror movie kind of it's got like Is the it? weird like 80 synth it's almost like a john carpenter's type of score and then you've got like schwarzenegger who you don't know anything about at that point really it's just like a killing machine it's yeah. it's pretty interesting yeah, that's true. And then the second one's definitely like straight up action movie. Oh, so good though. The second one is like yeah. masterful. Mom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Edward Furley Long. Oh, Eddie. Well, speaking of uh, '80s movies, I saw that they're uh, they're doing a Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure screening at the Circle K that they filmed that out here. Is that for real? Yeah, it's three years. <laughs> $15, you get the movie ticket and most excellent medium popcorn, whatever that means. So where where do you watch the movie at? On the, on the screen outside or? Probably next to the crackheads at the bus stop. Yeah, that's not a very safe place. Interesting. Oh, a live DJ. Neat. Photo ops, movie theme, trivia. Well, I'm going to go down there and kick some ass. That's a weird, weird spot for a show. I know, I know. It's sold out though, so obviously people are excited. I guess so. After watching that third one they did, I don't really need any more Bill and Ted. That one's rough. Oof. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> Anything else going on, buddy? Not a whole lot. Same old. Yeah. You playing anything? Still, I'm at the fucking end of fucking Elden Ring. I'm Still? stuck. Yeah. Oh, it's so fucking hard. I'm at the end though. Man. Last yeah. boss or I think so. Yeah. I don't know because I've avoided like any spoilers, but I'm I'm pretty sure <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm at the end. Is it's... it the one that like takes different forms or something like that? Yeah, nothing fucking pisses me off more than when you get that health bar down to like a quarter left and then you fucking wipe out, you know. Sometimes when I get down to that little bar, I just like kamikaze you try to beat oh the shit God. out of them before they beat the shit out of me yeah that's I, I imagine that can't work in the game like that though it sometimes it can i mean i've done that before and you're like <laughs> fuck your heart's beating out of your chest it's intense you know oh yeah so i don't know i'm got like 80 hours in it though got my money's worth i'm ready to move on move on yeah fuck this game yeah so i need to beat it I need to figure out a strategy and, and beat it how about you still working on mlb Still working on MLB, trying to unlock the uh, Anthony Rizzo Player of the Month card. A lot of people were disappointed by that card. Felt like he wasn't a good choice for that. Well, why not? He was on fire. He's been pretty shitty since. 
course. Yeah. I don't know who else they would have wanted. Who like tell me who who else would have you would have preferred? I can't think of somebody else that had a super hot month like that. I love when people get all pissed at Manny those, Machado, uh, maybe. Yeah. I love when people get pissed at those porch home runs. Rizzo pot flies. Fucking shitty ballpark. You know, I think shittier is the original. <laughs> That's ridiculous. As a baseball fan, you shouldn't even talk like that. I'd rather watch a game at Fenway. That's absurd. And who'd want to watch those losers anyways? It's just a cooler looking stadium. Is it? It's, it's unique. There's nothing unique about anything New York Yankees. Uh, black and white pinstripes. Oh, boring. Not black boring, and white. That's the White Sox. Boring state. Blue? What? Whatever. Yeah, the dark Navy. Dark Navy. <laughs> no beards. No expression. No fun. The boys are having fun this year, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we'll see for how long. It's reminding me of the old days. I've heard this song before. No, you haven't heard this song. This is a totally <laughs> different. This is a totally different team than last year. I've I've heard this song and dance. This is the year. This is the year. A little spe- special team going on. <laughs> Aaron Judge is gonna <laughs> fuck around and get four hundred million. He's doing it at the right time. Ugh. I just saw his car got upgraded. Like two points uh, he's on fucking fire anyways we don't isolate you uh movie guys with the sports talk um we're doing a look back at the career of tom cruise today with the upcoming release of top gun maverick when does that come out next week uh yeah next week so after this episode comes out the week okay. after yeah it's supposed to come out last year a couple times and it just kept getting pushed back it's been delayed a lot um getting probably, very good reviews at this moment it's good for good for fans of the film um i don't care for the original myself yeah uh, but you know we we see enough tom cruise stuff that we thought we could do a little uh walk through of his career so that's what we're gonna yeah. get into today Are you a fan uh i am yeah he's done a handful of movies that i really enjoy um i mean you know he's kind of gets the reputation for being a little psychotic outside of his work but yeah uh, you know Question- I, questionable morals yeah i uh it's not one of my favorites never comes to mind as one of my favorites but i, I like when work. i like when he's like acting he's not like i like the action films but right. my more favorite of his films is when he's like acting, acting. Yeah, like guys wide shut. Yeah, yeah. It's the good shit. So Thomas Cruise, Matt Bother, the fourth, born July third, nineteen sixty-two. As we all know, he's one of the world's highest paid actors. He's received various accolades throughout his career, including three Golden Globe awards, in addition to nominations for a British Academy Film Award and three Academy Awards. So he's like sixty now. Yeah, he's, yeah, in July he's going to be 60. And he S- still looks like he's 40 because they drink the blood of children in Hollywood, but <laughs> drink the well, <laughs> the Scientology church, I'm he's sure. In, he's involved in all sorts of shit. Yeah, he's he's if anybody's got a dark yeah. a, a dark personal life, it's it's this guy. Tom's definitely drinking some uh, baby blood cocktails though. <laughs> baby blood. <laughs> raping children with the priests yeah. of scientology yep we'll uh we'll leave it to the imagination of you listeners <laughs> or or not he just he doesn't look like a 60 year old man though yeah yeah that's the, the that's the point probably because his films have grossed over four billion dollars in north america and over 10 billion dollars worldwide making him one of the highest grossing box office stars of all time wow that'll do it that'll do it with that type of money, you can afford whatever you whatever your heart desires in life. What a fucking Ugh. life. It must be nice. Must be very nice. So we're going to jump right into the time. We're not even going to talk about the death of Fred Ward, Tremor star. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, if I'm sure if I brought him up, you'd be like, who cares? No, he was a 30 minutes or less great film. I know that was what I thought of when I when I saw that. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Like, I mean, what the hell is going on? <laughs> it's like tremors. Who gives a fuck? Where's this filmography? Why is this not on his page? This is ridiculous. Okay, here we go. So I don't know about you. I'm not like super familiar with a lot of his earlier work. 
Um, well, that's the way we do things here. We do retrospectives without really having the knowledge. Pretty much, yeah. I know a lot more of his his older stuff. Um, well, not older, but like, you know, more recent. But he started out in 1981 in a film called Endless Love. He was Billy. Billy. Billy Francis Kopecky. <laughs> it was his uh, film debut. He was in a minor role. Who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> we are two lonely children. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, shit. Looks ridiculous in that role. <laughs> Same year, though, he did in 1981. He was in a film called Taps. Ooh, is that a the Ghost Atlantic Hunters? Paranormals. <laughs> <laughs> the Atlantic Paranormal Society? <laughs> yeah, Taps. It's uh, an <laughs> uh, American drama starring George C. Scott and Timothy Hutton. Interesting. Well, I like Timothy Hutton. I do too. Ordinary pe- penises, people. Great in that film. But 1983, this is when, this is when things start off. 1983, The Outsiders. Thoughts? Um, I've seen it a couple times. Uh, people love that movie. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I think everybody read it. Yeah. It's never, it has the brat pack in it. Yeah. It's just never one of those that I loved. It's okay. I just thought it was a little I, cheesy. I used to love this movie yeah. and then watching it more recently. Yeah, it's, it's like, it is very cheesy. Doesn't doesn't hold up all that well, you know. The acting is pretty poor. Ralph Macchio is like, how did that guy ever have a career? Because he's horrible. Yeah, I mean, with with the outsiders, I used to be like really into it, but it's it's super cheesy. The acting is yeah it's not good yeah i don't know Ra- ralph macchio is is like straight up one of the worst performances i've ever seen in this movie well he was in beer league he was also <laughs> people love karate kid for whatever reason it's crazy how that like that spinoff show got really popular i don't power of uh power of nostalgia i guess i watched i saw one clip of it where the uh the villain guy was talking about non-binary i just I moved on real quick I'm like, fuck this anyways necessary yeah i mean stat cast though you got matt dillon patrick swayze rob lowe diane lane amelia estevez that's, that's a jam-packed cast see thomas howe leaf garrett who were big at the time now see thomas howe is uh an amazing spider-man wow the crane operator on the bridge you remember that part what a what a what a roll <laughs> what a downgrade that's the best part of the film when they line up the cranes and a nice shot of uh andy limping Ooh, man the james, the james horner music fuck me so i i need to rewatch those so good oh my god the film received mostly positive reviews from critics most notably for the performances with machio being singled out for praise yeah well Fuck Wait, does that mean that with does that mean they they didn't praise him with Machio being singled out for praise? Or is no, that mean they praised? I think they picked him and said, wow, what a performance. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. Holy shit. Uh same year though, he had Risky Business, which is another one that it's like got that iconic scene. Of him sliding in his underwear, it is but I don't know the, anything else about it. it. It that is one of the iconic uh, scenes that has been spoofed a hundred times and shows yeah. up in commercials still. And yep, teen sex comedy. Uh, <laughs> the you'll like this film. The film covers themes including materialism, loss of innocence, coming of age, and capitalism. Wow, actually, sounds pretty good. It I've just always his... been put off by that scene, you know? It's like, a ch- I don't want to see that. Yeah, but this is, uh, I guess, considered his breakout role. This is the one that really sent him off into the Stwath feel. Because in the same year, you've got all the right moves. Wow. Ooh, Craig was... T. Nelson, Leah Thompson, Chris Penn. Damn. What a cast. Stacked. Looks What'd like he's say? playing football. Craig T. Nelson? I did. Nobody's better in a football role than Craig T. Nobody's better in a ghost film than Craig T. Talk talk about a film that doesn't hold up. You love the bodies, but you... (laughs) 
<laughs> you only took the headstones. The worst part about my uh, Texas chainsaw blanket is it says the director of Poltergeist on the back. <laughs> Damn, I need to get that now and just cut it out. Cut out that part. <laughs> yeah. Well, director of Poltergeist. Yeah, you want to cut that piece out and send it to me? Bring back coach. I'll take it off your hands. <laughs> Man, I wouldn't they be surprised. A, they shot a reboot of coach reboot and nobody ever saw it but it was filmed somebody's got it out there did anybody ever watch the original the coach was awesome fuck I'd, I'd pay some good money to see that reboot pilot i wouldn't be surprised if he was the next one to die he's old mm-hmm. 1985 two years later came out with legend legend directed by directed and initiated by ridley scott whatever that wow. means Tom Cruise, Mia Sarah, hmm, Tim Curry. Mia Sarah from Ferris Bueller? Yeah. That's what, that's like the only two movies she ever did. Pretty much. Unless you count Time Cop, I guess. Yeah, I wonder what she's doing now because she's uh I don't know. That's she, she's one of those people you never see, like you never they just disappeared. She married Sean Connery's son. Hmm. And then she married Jim Henson's son. Damn. <laughs> So she's just like living it up. Yeah, I guess so. Good for One her. One of the most popular films ever. You don't really need to do anything else. That's true. But I guess uh, Legends, a cult classic. Never seen it. Yeah. Is that the one where he's the, where Tim Curry's the devil? I don't know. Not sure. Lord of Darkness. Yeah, seems like it. You know, sorry, getting off topic, but I always wonder what a person like Mia Sarah, like what does she get for her royalty checks from Ferris Bueller? You know, ah, that's a good question. Um, I came across that profile for the guy, the guy that played young Jonah Hill in Superbad that was drawn the dicks. Yeah. And he's talking about his royalty checks that he gets. And he was showing him he gets like eight bucks a month. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, it was really interesting. So well, and that's know. like a two second roll. So yeah, yeah, I wonder what what hers would be. Yeah, it's just funny. Shows like his eight dollar check that he gets from whatever the studio is for his royalties. But I always wonder, like, Mia Sarah goes out to her mailbox every month. <laughs> How much is waiting for her? You know, I don't know. Maybe enough to survive. <laughs> Who knows? Interesting. That'd be cool. Uh, next year, though, nineteen eighty six. He takes on the role of Lieutenant Pete Maverick Mitchell in Top Gun. <laughs> Very popular film. Um, I've seen don't. it once. I just don't. I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. Very gay. <laughs> Very gay. Is it? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're just like there's montages of them playing beach volleyball half naked oh it's a, like it's kind of like rocky four yeah okay yeah yeah <laughs> some great music by uh, kenny loggins playing with the boys <laughs> <laughs> holy shit uh, but it's also got classic song danger zone right into the danger zone best used in harold and kumar skit from guantanamo bay See, got Harold right behind me. Where is that? What <laughs> is it Rob, in that? Yeah, they're on the plane and taking them back to G Bay. Rob Cordry's got his headphones on. He's eating whoppers. He's listening to that song and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> "So good, so good." You couldn't just say Guantanamo Bay. G Bay. <laughs> yeah, Top Gun. Uh, very popular. People... Yeah, in 2015, it was the United States Library of Congress selected the film for, for preservation for the National wow. Film Registry. You know, for whatever reason. That's interesting. All right, same year, 1986, The Color of Money. Ooh. A, se a sequel to The Hustler. Which the Hustler. I, I love that movie. Oh, very strong. People kind of, you don't really hear about that one. No, no, um, you, you really don't, but it's, it's fucking good. The Color um, of Money is good, or The Hustler is good? The Hustler is good. Oh. I've never seen The Color of Money, but yeah. it's a Scorsese picture. That's weird. It is weird. Paul Newman reprises his role from the original, and uh, I assume it's probably him taking <laughs> Tom Cruise under his wing. 
it's kind of strange to do like a sequel to a classic like that, but then it has like a different name and people might not know about it. It's like when they did a, a sequel to Chinatown, Jack Nicholson oh, directed yeah. a sequel, to the two, two Jakes. Jacks. Yeah. Right, the two Jakes. It's like, who the fuck even knows what that is? You know, I didn't know that. Um, but Newman ended up winning an Academy Award for this performance. Holy shit. His first Oscar win after seven nominations. Good for him. He deserves it. He was great in. Um, I like his pizzas. His pi- <laughs> Newman's pizza. Yeah, those are good. Were you gonna finish your joke? Or- oh, he's great in slap shot. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> I like when he's talking to the the goalie, and he's like, "So and so's wife's look pussy." <laughs> <laughs> That's the type of hockey content I like. Yeah. Uh, two years later, 1988, he's in Cocktail, which is another one of the earlier Tom Cruise films I've never seen. It looks like it's probably cheesy as shit. It tells the story of a young New York City business student, Brian Flanagan, <laughs> Brian O'Halloran, who takes, right. up bar t- <laughs> who takes up bartending in order to make ends meet. Walt Flanagan. Who? Elizabeth Shue. Yeah, this but, is one of those I've, you know, I've never watched it, but like I've seen it pop up all over the place. It's just, I don't know. But the Shitty same artwork. year. Yeah, it's hor- I mean, it's very 80s. Like, that's that's all? That's all the work you're putting into that? Yeah. Weird. And and the when he pours, he rains. Oh, wow. What a, Yuck. What a line. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. Same year, though, for the better film, Rain Man. Rain Man. There's a big one. Have you seen this one? I have a couple times. Um, it's a great autism story. It is. Dustin Hoffman is one of the greats, one of my favorite actors. He is. Dustin is classic. Um, yeah, Rain Man's good. Yeah. Um, as of 2022, Rain Man is the first and only film to win both Golden Bear and Academy Award for Best Picture. It was also the last MGM title to be nominated for Best Picture until Licorice Pizza 33 years later. Wow. That's Crazy. kind of, kind of interesting. I didn't know MGM put out Licorice Pizza. Neither. Uh, Rain Man looks, seems like that could be like a Criterion sort of movie. You know, I don't know. I could see that. Yeah. <clears throat> Next year, 1989, born on the 4th of July. Good, uh, <laughs> good, uh, uh, <laughs> What's the word I want to use? Good paralysis film? Yes. <laughs> it's a uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> like a Tom Cruise retrospective when you haven't seen any Tom Cruise films. No, I've I've seen this one. It it is good. It's like is over it? a tw- it's like a 20 year period of his life. He, he it's an anti-war film uh directed by Oliver Stone and we we know how he can be with I like Oliver. Yeah, Oliver's pretty good. Um, but it details his childhood, his military service, and paralysis during the Vietnam War and his transition to anti war activism. Oh, you said transition. I don't know where you're going with that. Transition into a <laughs> woman. <laughs> Phew. Phew. Was Frank that you Wade. that posted that uh that Tom Hanks, Robert Zemeckis time yeah. movie? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck me. Robin, that's Robin great. Wright. God. Everybody coming back. Man, finally, like another Zemeckis Hanks masterwork. No more of this witches remake shit. Yeah, fuck that. I didn't even see that movie. I watched. I looked over some girl's shoulder on an airplane when she was watching it, and that's all I needed to see. And then you sniffed her neck. No, she was ugly. (laughs) Then you sniffed her cooch. (laughs) Hot chicks would be cut dead watching that shit. Mile High Club. (laughs) Nah. Frank Whaley's in it. Ooh, <laughs> and William Defoe. Ooh, did you see that the Northman is on VOD? Is it like twenty bucks to rent? Yeah, but you can also find. I'm it gonna. Online. I might just sit at my computer and watch an HD rip of it. Yeah, Ooh. I started watching it again last night. On your computer? No, I put it on the TV. I just went to like the internet browser of the Xbox. Um, and... Is the quality good? Yeah. Okay, send me that link because I'm going to fucking watch that today, baby. Let's go. Ooh. God, God, I love it. Shove a sword up my ass, Robert. 
All right, we're quitting the Tom Cruise retrospective. We're getting into the Robert Eggers. <laughs> Robert Eggers. Now we got something to talk about. <laughs> 1990. Yeah, 1990 Days of Thunder. Another one of those shitty Tom Cruise. I always remember uh, Nick D buying that Blu-ray and he's like, yeah, I'm going to check out Days of Thunder. You know, Tom, and he didn't, he was like, yeah, it sucked. <laughs> it was cheesy. I always uh, think about that. <laughs> Had a pretty good cast though. Nicole Kidman, Robert Duvall, Randy Quaid, Carrie Elwes, Michael Rooker. Did you say Randy Quaid? I said Randy Quaid. This is the first of three films to star both Cruz and Kidman, the other two being Far and Away and Eyes Wide Shut. Hmm. I just car racing is so gay. Like (laughs) (laughs) it's it's something, isn't it? Like it's funny because like I love playing like Gran Turismo or like a racing game, but yeah, Mario sit, Kart. <laughs> yeah, to sit down and yeah, even Gran Turismo is a little like too realistic for me. Like, yeah, fuck, I don't know about these transmissions and shit, but <laughs> to sit down and watch a movie about racing, yeah, or to sit down and just watch racing. I hear you. Rather watch that one movie with Frankie Muniz, Miracle in Lane Twelve or whatever. Oh yeah, where he's a par- par- paraplegic, <laughs> virgin in Lane Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> that he makes good olive oil though <laughs> Sounds always good olive. always eluded me always wanted to meet him just gotta go in every day nah. 19 <laughs> <laughs> two years later 1992 far and away which is not one i've seen but I, i'm pretty sure he puts on he puts on a uh an accent in this oh interesting the second uh the second meetup between him and nicole kidman but the better film from 1982 a few good men yeah that is a good one i've only seen it once but i loved it me too that's one i could watch again it's been a yeah. long time i got the 4k and just have yet to put it in Ooh, didn't know there was one there is aaron sorkin though wrote it he sucks <laughs> yeah I think we talked about that last week or last episode. Aaron Sorkin, yeah. he sucks. I'll talk about it for the rest of my life. <laughs> He's uh, shitty. Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson, Demi Moore, Kevin Bacon, Cuba, Gooden Jr., Kiefer Sutherland. Man. Big old cast. Some stacked lineups for some of these movies. Yeah. But I mean, the the biggest part is the is the court case. You can't handle the truth. The you, know how I, death. you know how I feel about court court scenes in film you love them no the plot follows a court martial of two u.s marines charged with the murder of a fellow marine and the tribulations of their lawyers as they prepare a case Hmm. well if that's not going to get you what about this this first sentence at the guantanamo bay naval (sighs) base in cuba (laughs) G-Bay. that's all all i had to say all i had to say welcome to guantanamo bay you boys ready for your cock meat sandwich (laughs) Look what we got here, boys. Mexicans. Kenny, Travis, what in tarnation are you guys doing here? 1993. Ah, this is the movie that comes out the year I was born. The Firm. Actually, it might be pretty good. Directed by Sidney Pollack. You know what? Ackman, Ed Harris, Holly Hunter. I had that Blu-ray and it was in its shrink wrap for about seven years. And then I traded it in, in the shrink wrap. <laughs> never opened like, it, never watched it. It's probably another court film. Exactly. <laughs> the firm, it just looks boring. Sidney Pollack, though. Yeah. You know, it's Who? probably fine. <laughs> Who? <laughs> so I get he... just Sidney Pollack, what was he in? Eyes Wide Shut. Wide Shut. Yeah, I know him. But he, he directed a shit ton of films, too. Tootsie. Oh, <laughs> there's a Dustin um, Hoffman performance for you. Three days in the Condor. I sold that. Bl- I sold that Blu-ray too. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Never watched it. Sold it. Try something new for once. I watch. I try tons of new stuff. Okay, hold on. <laughs> let's, let's see. How many Real times quick, can you watch the Terminator? <laughs> <laughs> I watch Marty. That was a surprise. That yeah. was a surprise. I like it because he reminds me of me. 
<laughs> a butcher? <laughs> Marty, a butcher who lives in Socially the Socially awkward, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got oh, it. Funny. Oh, and he meets an unattractive school teacher. So it is, it is you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Funny. <laughs> it's just funny because like the whole movie, they're just ragging on him. Like, why aren't you getting married? Why aren't you getting like, I was stressed for him. Like, fuck off. God. What is it? Borgnine? Yeah. Ernest yeah. Borgnine? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen anything. He's I done. like him. I like him. 1994 interview with the vampire i didn't realize that was 94 thoughts i actually just watched that for the first time probably a little over a year ago i'm still in arizona I think it was yeah like right, right before i moved pretty for me personally pretty unmemorable it's it's like a creepy uh, yeah it's kind of yeah it's kind of got like that erotic sort of vampire you know i don't know how you yeah. describe it gothic it's like for chicks you know if you want to see yeah. uh tom cruise and brad pitt you know yeah 10 year old chicks that want to fuck brad pitt yeah 10 year old chicks that want to fuck brad pitt um i don't know yeah you said god it's like that old school like gothic sort of vampire you know not my favorite it used to I, like i saw it once when i was young and it yeah like it haunted me for a long time i i mean I, it was enjoyable i didn't think it was bad or anything but you know if i'm going for a vampire flick it's not going to be that twilight yeah twilight for sure yeah case two mm. 1996 this is when it all begins mission impossible uh-huh i i'm a fan of those films i'd say um I've seen the first couple i think that is just not my genre it just has never been my genre um, it it isn't for me either but the ones that i do yeah. like i really like yeah um this one was directed by brian de palma i enjoy that stuff you know that's fair enough yeah yeah started started this whole series because now it, they're still making movies to this day yep 15 oh my god 15 years is that about what year did the first one come out oh my 96 more than 15 years dude 20, 20 some years <laughs> yeah i still feel like the 90s is last decade yeah you know it's crazy from okay when i was a kid in the 90s i used to think the 60s were so like so that was so far back well we're in that same distance now yeah. for the 90s yeah you know the like 60s talk, is 60 yeah. years ago yeah well when you talk about the 90s that's 30 years ago when we talked about the 60s and the 90s that was 30 years ago uh so fucked stop so <laughs> fucked stop god anytime yeah. i want to end it i can just go jump off my balcony and do the job <laughs> what what floor are you on i'm on, i'm on the top it's which is fourth but it's you think that would do it no it's it's high it would do it if you go down head first. <laughs> I don't you think do you have control once you go. <laughs> Somebody's going to call the suicide hotline if they're listening to this. <laughs> Dark humor, folks. I'll wait until the Yankees lose the playoffs to make that leap. Wait till they go through a downward spiral in July. Not this year, buddy. You heard it here first. The Yankees are missing the playoffs this year. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You know, Blue Jays are going to go on a hot streak. <laughs> No wild card game this year, buddy. Say yeah, breakfast I don't, buffet. I don't understand the playoff format, but that's that's for another time. We don't want to isolate the audience. Uh, same year though, Jerry Maguire. Really enjoy this one. Do you know human having fifty pounds or whatever the fucking lip dicky says? Dick licky. <laughs> Jonathan limp dicky. <laughs> Jonathan nip licky. <laughs> you know, I've seen this. I know it's. I've heard it's a great movie. I'm sure it is. I've never sat down and watched the whole thing. I've seen bits and pieces of it. I'm sure, it's good. It's probably one I should watch. It's pretty good. I mean, Cameron Crow, Cameron Cam Crow wrote and directed Cam it. Cameron Co. Cameron Co. Cuba Gooden Jr. Renee Zellweger, Wigger, <laughs> <laughs> Regina King. Um, nominated for five Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Actor. Uh, Cuba won for Best Supporting Actor in this, which is kind of crazy. Um, it's one of those movies that was in that Columbia Classics collection. So, oh, okay. 
got to put that in at some point see how good how good a film like that looks that's the 4k set yeah yeah i looked up because we were talking about it, i looked up like what it would cost just by taxi driver that fucker's trying to sell it for 40 bucks on ebay it's a little too much yeah that's ridiculous yeah. at one point you could probably get it for like 20 bucks 20 25 yeah. i mean if you're paying 40 bucks for one might as well just have bought the set you know yeah it's just gonna keep going up like uh, i said before the whole set is like 300 bucks now this is me off i need to purge uh, some of my collection yeah i do too there's just uh, stuff that i've purged a lot of it yeah but there's just stuff that like what if one day i want to watch it again there's yeah. some stuff that i know i can find now, somewhere else and you know what i need to go through and like cat like log all my shit in the yeah. app because i swear i have some you know i don't remember what i've had or I definitely feel like I've lost some things. Yeah. You know, who knows? I've moved so many times, but like when I was putting shit on my shelf and thinking, man, I thought I had that, you know, and it's just I, not there. Yeah. Well, uh, now that you have them on shelves, you can just go down the line. Yeah. And yeah. Add everything. I, I might take a while, but... spend some time doing that just to mm-hmm. categorize them. Yeah. Uh, three years later, 1999, probably two of the best films. I mean, the best one, too. Uh, Eyes Wide Shut and Magnolia. Oh my God, those are those are big films. Yeah, imagine being I, in those two movies that quick next to each other. Fuck. Well, working with two of the best directors that. Yeah. You could argue. Yeah, no two shit. Of the best directors. Uh, I get Paul Thomas Anderson. Obviously, a little he was. Yeah. Way way down. Con- right. Not uh, as popular as he is now. Stanley. Yeah contrasted with stanley kubrick right that was the end of kubrick's career and you know didn't didn't even get to see the finished film no i get i had chills well i guess he did eyes wide shut i that's only seen it the one time i'm still like holding out for the 4k to come out soon you know i watched it this past holiday season and it was the second second time i'd seen it oh man fucking (laughs) something else so that movie something else chills it's a Christmas movie. It's a holiday movie. <laughs> Sexually charged adventures of Dr. Bill Harford, who is shocked when his wife Alice reveals that she had contemplated having an affair a year earlier. He then embarks on a nightlong adventure during which he infiltrates a masked orgy of an unnamed secret society. <laughs> so fucking creepy. Like, I don't even know how to. I think that was Stanley showing us what goes on. Maybe. <laughs> I Maybe. really do. I think that was his him saying, I'm about to die. I'm going to show you what happens. Yeah. I, I really think it's fucking bizarre as fuck. Creepy. Based, based on a 1926 novella. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's just the, yeah. I mean, if you ever are somebody that wonders like what goes on with the elite people in power, or, yeah, those conspiracies, this is... Ugh. Nicole Kim is like so fucking good in that movie too. Oh god. Man. A little white tank top she's wearing. I I I do like her. I like her yeah. a lot, actually. She's good. She yeah. could still, she could still get it. Of course. That's a fucking fantastic film, though. Yeah. Magnolia, though. I think that's probably my favorite PTA. Really? It's, yeah, I think so. It's it's um definitely in the same vein of like shortcuts. Those yeah. Altman films where it's just a bunch of converging. It is. I just saw characters. that for the first time too. Like, God, I don't know. It was six months ago. I was kind of going through some of the PTA stuff. I remember watching the frog scene when we were in that hotel when we were in Chicago. Oh shit. And just like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Yeah. I knew that was coming, you know, because it's hard to avoid that after so many years. But man. I don't I don't know what it means, but it's cool. Yeah, that's one that. I'm sure I'll appreciate it. I liked it a lot. I'm sure I'll appreciate it more, you know, when I go mm-hmm. back to it. Big cast, though. Tom Cruise, Melinda Dillon, Philip Baker Hall, Philip Seymour Hoffman, William H. Macy, Alfred Molina, Julianne Moore, Fuck. John C. Riley. Stacked. Ton of fucking people. Great film. Love that one. PTA rules. 2000 Mission Impossible 2, which is probably the worst. I don't think it's probably. I think it is the worst really it's, it's bad it's not good so that's was, that's not as good as like so the new ones that come out no not at all wow no it's not good at all and it was directed by a, a very competent director john woo who made tons of hong kong action films that are sure. praised so i just don't know if it translated 
or didn't translate. There was a Mission Impossible Nintendo 64 game that sucked ass. I don't know if you ever played I re- it. No, but I always remember seeing <laughs> it's it. Like a red cartridge. And I just remember this one specific level where you have to lower him down through like these lasers. It's a fucking pain in the dick. Oh, I bet. With that shitty ass controller. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, 2001, Stanley Kubrick, Life and Pictures. I don't know if I've seen that documentary. I think I have. It's got That's a- on one of those... Uh, I think that's on one of those Blu-rays. It was like a... Was, it, where did I see that? It was um, featured on the 10th disc of Stanley Kubrick, The Essential Collection, and Stanley Kubrick Limited Edition Collection DVD and Blu-ray released in t- 2011. It was also bundled in a box set of some Kubrick's other films released in 2008. Huh. So well, I gave it a four a and a half. Things. You gave it a four and a half. You've seen oh, it. Oh, I guess yeah. I have seen it. I wonder where I watched that, though, because I don't have that set. It's probably oh. in one of the digis, one of the digi books. Oh yeah, that that is probably it. Because the box is one that's in the in Clockwork Orange, right? It's, it, it could be in that Clockwork Orange. Uh, I think book. maybe it was in the Full Metal Jacket one. That could be it. That sounds right. Ooh, in two thousand one, he also produced the others. Obviously, because Nicole Kidman was in that. I really like that movie a lot. That's uh. Yeah, I wouldn't mind going back to that. I remember yeah. what I remember like we rented it when I was, you know, when I ever came out 2001. It's, cre- it's it's got a great um it's got a great vibe to it, very creepy. Almost seems like a M Night Shyamalan type of plot, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Also in 2001 he did Vanilla Sky. Okay. Which is another Cameron Co film. Cameron Co. Cameron Co. And I haven't seen it. Me either. Is that a Penelope? Mm, yeah. God. Yeah. Fire. She is. Man. Nice. She was good in that uh, Pain and Glory. Ooh. That's a good movie. She's always in Pedro Aldomovar's films. Yeah, that's some good shit. I need to watch some more of his stuff. Woman on the ner- Women on a ver- Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. All oh. about my mother, I think. Uh, 2002 Minority Report. Seen it? Have not seen this. That's Spielberg, isn't it? It is. I have it. I just have not seen it either. But I think I've I have it too. Things. I've heard good. Wow. Received Academy Award nomination for best. Oh, best sound editing. That's one I should probably make a. Pre- you know, Spielberg. Come on, get to watch that. Yeah, Max Fa- Max von Sydow, Colin Farrell. I've just always kind of categorized that as long, along like War Horses, Spielberg films that I just don't really like. Oh, God. I don't love sci fi a whole lot. <laughs> Me either. I, I really, I'm, I don't know, like action and sci fi. Like when I was rewatching The Terminator the other day, I'm like, to me, these are the benchmarks. Yeah. I mean, and it, and it only goes down from there. Yeah. And that's my problem. Like action movies, I, I just think of like Terminator 2 and it doesn't yeah. come close, you know? Yeah. Uh, same year, though. Austin Powers gold member. The shittiest of the AP trilogy. Don't agree. But he has a cameo appearance appearance at the very beginning where he plays Austin Powers. We need uh, Austin th- Powers 4. What? So we need Austin Powers 4. Did you see that Mike Myers is in some Netflix thing where he's like yeah. a Russian? Yeah, it's like it's, it's a series. I didn't know. I yeah. Javi Javi talked about it. Oh, that's right up something he that's yeah, that's something he'd watch. <laughs> I, I yeah. I Did you see the Schweck? <laughs> Schweck makes a cameo. Does he? Yeah, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> There's a part where he's talking about you need to focus, but he says like you need to fuck us. Uh, Mike <laughs> he Myers. Took, uh, he took the, he took the time to walk from his desk, come over to me and Dave, and show us. <laughs> oh, you know, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a good one. <laughs> Funny, he's you it's know, like he's saying fuck us. Yeah. Oh. That's a real knee slapper. You know, I love Austin Powers. I love Wayne's World, but Mike Myers, uh, I don't know. A lot of shit in there. Yeah. (laughs) A lot of shit. (laughs) I'm not disagreeing, buddy. 2003 produced Shattered Glass, which is a pretty good movie. I love Shattered Glass. Hayden Christensen. That's a great movie. True story, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that one. But he was also in The Last Samurai, which I really like as well. 
that's one of his big ones. Have the Blu-ray. Never seen it. Edward Zick. <laughs> Edward Zwick. I mean, I haven't seen <clears throat> Seven Samurai, so I'm not going to watch The Last Samurai. Jesus Christ. I know. I can put a movie in. Or I know. Something. I know. I just <laughs> I know. end up laying around. <laughs> Do fun. you? No, I don't. But Scrolling I just Scrolling like, TikTok. You know, like I love baseball season, but once baseball starts, it really cuts into a lot of your free time, for me at least, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, that's why I like when there's a day game during the week, because then I got the night free. Because, I mean, I, I watch every game, you know? Yeah. But if you put a game on at six (laughs) o'clock, you know, I I don't know. First world problems. It sucks for you. Like for me, it's good because by seven or so, they're done. That was the nice thing about being in Arizona. Yeah. The game would start when I was driving home from work, you know. But then they're out here in the West Coast right now. So now I have to go to like seven. Yeah. 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 Anyways, first world problems. First world problems. 2004, collateral. People talk about this movie. A, a lot i have it i saw it years ago i remember it being pretty good michael mann michael mann tom cruise is like a it's like a hitman or something jamie fox is a taxi driver who like helps him across the across the say city jamie fox let's go catch a spider his teeth aren't as straight <laughs> I thought they fixed that gap in the movie. I am Electro. <laughs> I'm trying to think oh, of another. Fuck. What'd you do? The disc came flying out. Oh no. 2005. Maybe my favorite. No, it definitely top five. War of the Worlds. That's a good movie. I you put am... me onto that. I yes, thank you. Thank you for Hope your 4K still works after I left in my car for two hours. God, what a dickhead. I know. Sorry no respect for other people's I, property. I know. That was out of character for me. <laughs> it works because I watched it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I think it's just like a incredibly well done. Action really, it was film. really good. Yeah. Steven Spielberg. Probably people think of it as one of his lessers, but I. That's, it's just incredibly entertaining that's how i always saw that movie just like you know just kind of something that came and went but it was it was a good time yeah absolutely love that one some great action sequences pretty dark yeah and uh that's what i want to see if i'm watching an alien thing you know yeah aliens are not going to come here and yeah well close encounters <laughs> is pretty good though that is yeah <laughs> that is good signs no, they weren't very fun. It wasn't fun for me. <laughs> 2006 and Mission Impossible 3. These are when they start to get a little better again. Or they okay. go back to being good. J.J. <sighs> Abrams directed. Philip Seymour Hoffman is the uh, the villain. It's when Michelle Monaghan starts getting into the fold. He's I didn't know Mary. Abrams did one of those. Yeah, he did. This is when, <clears throat> I believe this is when a lot of the main cast in it now come in. Simon Pegg, Bing Rames. Oh, I think Rames might have been it. No wonder you fucking had a hard on for it. Shut the fuck up. I think Rames rules though. Says who? Andy. Sorry, brother. <laughs> Sorry, brother. Ooh, 2007. He was in a film called Lions for Lambs, directed by Robert Redford. Oh. About the connection between a platoon of United States soldiers in Afghanistan, a U.S. senator, a reporter, and a Californian college professor wow stars redford tom cruise and meryl streep wow wow how have i never heard of this probably sucks Ooh, andrew garfield oh shit count me in oh because it holds a 27 percent on rotten tomatoes that's why nobody which, knows about it which means nothing but like well, 20 27 percent is pretty yeah <laughs> that's pretty telling we got 10 minutes left this meeting have we been in here for 30 minutes already I guess, but we're we're almost done. There's a handful left. Okay. So we'll we'll bust through the rest of these real quick. 2008, he did a couple films: Tropic Thunder, Valkyrie. Um, Some... Tropic Thunder. I don't know. I could, people, people like that movie. A people lot. talk about that movie like it's a comedic masterpiece. Yeah, I bought it out of the Walmart bin, and I like I don't know. I never. I put it in one time. I'm like, oh, this is not for me. That's Valkyrie... what I could get rid of. <laughs> Valkyrie. I've seen, I saw this a long time ago. 
I have it and I haven't put it in, but uh, it was written by Christopher McQuarrie, who does the, the Mission Impossible films now. But it's the um, story of the plot to assassinate Hitler. Hmm. So you know I'm ready to watch it. Did you say Hitler? Cruz's casting caused controversy among German politicians and members of the von Stauffenberg family due to actors' practice of Scientology, which is viewed with suspicion in Germany. Well, that's good. At least somebody's suspicious of that bullshit. Yeah, but I mean, you know, he's an actor. Let him act. He's been acting his whole life. Who's ready for Kevin Spacey's big comeback? I know I am. 2011. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 2011 Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. This is when, like, they really, like, take a step. This is when he's, like, hanging off airplanes and shit. This is the one where he's hanging off that giant skyscraper in Dubai or whatever it is. This one might be my favorite one. This one's wow. very good. Paula Patton. Look up Paula Patton, Mission Impossible 4. If you say so. Just tell me. Paula Poundstone. <laughs> <laughs> Leah Seydoux's in it, too. Oh, yes. Yeah, she's fucking pretty fucking hot for... Uh, is she black? She's, yeah, she's like hot. mixed. Yeah, she's mixed. good. Good looking, uh, good looking chick. Is it the, the blue dress? I mean, it looks green to me. Oops, I put. I accidentally started <laughs> typing Paula Poundstone. <laughs> you don't want to see her. No, I'm good. Oh, yeah, it is green. I'm yeah. colorblind. Yeah, she's baddie. Yeah. Yeah, this is probably, probably my favorite of the Mission Impossible films. Uh, 2012, this sounds like a movie you would watch, Rock of Ages. Never seen it. <laughs> know about it. Never seen I, it. I'm surprised. Why? Seems like I don't know. It just seems like your thing. The I'm tired way of this you, rap. The way you talk about "Take Me Home Tonight," it just seems like the same thing. That's a good movie, though. Have you seen it? No. Why not? Because I've got are better you, things to you, do. Are you too good for a fun movie? It doesn't seem fun. <laughs> it's got Dan Fogler in it. Yeah, so do the Fantastic Beast movies. This is better than that. So it's like a nice throwback to the '80s, man. If I want a Dan Fogler movie. I'm going to watch Balls of Fury. Yikes. <laughs> well, it's got a stacked cast. It's got Russell Brand. I know you like him a lot. Alec Baldwin, Paul Giamatti, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Malin wow. Ackerman, Mary Ooh. J. Blige, Brian wow. Cranston. Jesus. 90, uh, 1980s rock, Def Leppard, Journey, Scorpions, like all your favorite bands. Not my favorite bands, but I'd give it a whirl. All your favorite hair metal bands. Yeah. Same year, Jack Reacher, run-of-the-mill action film. Yeah, I never got into that. Didn't do much for me. 2013, Oblivion. I like Oblivion. Got the steelbook for it. It's, at the very least, it's a visual spectacle, you know? Yeah. It's one of those that just looks really, really good on a nice Directed setup. Directed by Joseph Kaczynski, who's also doing Top Gun Maverick. Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, I don't really remember much about Oblivion, though. I only saw it that one time. I just thought it was solid, you know? Yeah. 2014 edge of tomorrow i know you're kind of iffy on this one Uh, i I like that one too but like i don't i have no reason to go back to it you know yeah i think that one's yeah i think that one's good it was solid i own it uh doug lyman who also did what else did he do american made yeah that was another tom cruise movie very forgettable jumper i remember seeing that shit in theaters is that hayden yeah love that guy uh 2015 mission impossible road mission impossible rogue nation uh this is the one where he's hanging from the plane okay yeah yeah this one's also very good still pumping those movies out man i know they're they've got two more coming 2023 2024 they're doing dead reckoning part one and part two god damn interesting 2016 he did the jack reacher sequel 2017 he did the mummy which is horrible. Yeah, nobody. The, the, yeah, that fucking came and went. Yeah, yeah, that whole universe they were oh, trying to make. God, I watched fucking Dracula Untold. What a piece of shit. Oh God. Uh, also, 2017 American Made, very forgettable drug trafficking movie. Um, 2018 Mission Impossible Fallout, which is also very good. Um, 
that's when Christopher McQuarrie started taking over. And I think he's the one doing the next couple very good action sequences. It's, it's pretty good. And that leads up to, he hasn't done a movie since then. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. He hasn't. Cause he was, he was very big on like the COVID protocols and yeah, yeah. I don't, that outburst he had on the set. Yeah. Which probably was fake. Who knows? Some controversy. Yeah. All leads up to <clears throat> Top Gun Maverick. 2022 Top Gun Maverick, 2023 Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, 2024 Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2. Wow. I think yeah. he's a good actor, but I mean, I just, you know, the, the action stuff is not for me. Yeah. Well, he's, you know, like we said, one of the biggest stars, but definitely like when you think action, he's on the Mount Rushmore. Oh, for sure. For sure. So, I mean, yeah. what's your favorite Tom Cruise film? Magnolia. Probably Magnolia. There's that scene where he's sitting by his dad on his deathbed and he it's just good. has has that breakdown. And after that, fuck, probably War of the Worlds. I love that movie. Wow, over uh, Eyes Wide Shut. Ooh. I think you should watch that again if you've only seen I, it once. I need to, yeah. yeah fuck. Like I have no I have no reason to think I would like it less. It's That's just typical Kubrick, you know, spooky. Spooky shit. What about what? you? Eyes wide shut. Eyes wide shut. Yeah. Uh, a lot of case should be coming soon. A lot of is that coming out? I've heard it's supposed to come out this year. A lot of shots and that kind of remind me of The Shining. You know that, um, like the fade transition. Mm-hmm. Uh, where the tracking just comes, shot. Yeah, there's uh, there's a party sequence at the beginning of Eyes Wide Shut that really just gives me like Shining vibes. You know. I yeah, know. It's, it's just great. it just has a very uniquely creepy vibe. Yeah, it's it's great. Yeah. Well. Tom Cruise fans, hope you enjoy Top Gun Maverick. I think we did pretty good with this retrospective, considering we haven't yeah. seen everything. Yeah, as long as we've seen a good amount. Yeah, let us know what your favorite Tom Cruise film is. Let us know what you're, uh, if you're excited for Top Gun Maverick or what you think about it. Uh, <laughs> Nick, any closing thoughts? Uh, Philly's going to sweep the Dodgers in LA. Heard it here first. <laughs> And then go 500 the rest of the year. <laughs> Sounds about right. Um, we are running out of time here. So going to call it an episode. This is 165. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Slacker Media. Check out my movie room tour. Check out all our videos. More stuff coming there. Uh, if you listen on Apple Podcasts, I should actually change the intro because I say, check us out on iTunes. I don't think anyone even uses that term anymore, iTunes. Um, we're on Spotify, all the platforms. So give it a listen. Uh, any recommendations for content, shoot it our way. That being said, episode 165 in the books. Thank you guys for listening. And as always, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> <laughs>